Hello and welcome back everybody. I'm your host Bumps in the Night and tonight we're going to be talking about another paranormal experience. So tonight I have one of my guests with me. This is Liam and Liam's going to tell us what he went through. Hello. I have an experience that took place even before I was born. It all started with my parents wanted to move into a bigger house. They were living on 8 Hickory Crescent, which is the street um, right beside the street that I'm currently living on. And they wanted to move into a bigger house because my mom was pregnant with me at the time. And so there was an open lot right diagonal from 8 Hickory Crescent. Mm -hmm. So they thought it would be a good idea to build a house on there. Okay, cool. And so they get connected with the builders and I was in um, some time. The house is finished and they move into it. But my mom gets this feeling that something isn't quite right, like there's something else in a room with her when she's alone. Oh my. As cliche as this sounds, once she was taking my older sister for a walk to the park, mm -hmm. came back, and she bathed her and got her ready for bed. Then she pointed to the corner and said, who's that man in the corner? As scared as my mom was, she looks over. And as usual, there was nothing there. So she just talks it off to my sister, seeing things. When she comes into my room, my dad was with me. He was reading me one of my bedtime stories as I was like three years old at the time. Okay. And so he comes, and he puts me to bed. And then nights on after that, like I'd say, like, started... My mom said it all started March 21st, 2009, when I was around three years old. Mm -hmm. And I would wake up, and there'd be, be this tall shadow man just standing in the middle of my room. Of course, I'd wake up, my three-year-old brain was just petrified because, I, one, I didn't know what I was looking at, and two, I was scared because... Maybe there's some unknown person in my room. This was very scary. And so I'd run to my mom's room and she'd call me down, bring me back to my bed, have me go back to sleep after no, story. No, she made you go back to sleep in the room with the shadow man? <laughs> That's right. Oh my gosh, your mom's hardcore, man. She is very hardcore. Say, that would scare anybody. If I woke up and saw something like that, like, I, I'm 30 now, and I would still be like, holy shit, what is that? <laughs> yeah. I go back to bed, and this happens for, like, weeks on end. I just wake up, and that shadow person is there. Now, and question for you. Do they have, like, any descriptive features? Like, I know a lot of people claim when they see a shadow person, they call it the hat man, because there's always, like, this big, like, rimmed hat on them. It was, picture a tall, skinny person, but a tall, skinny person with one of those indigenous feathers on their head, mm -hmm. and his arms would just, they would always be at his side, like, as if he was standing at attention. Oh my. After weeks of this, I just couldn't sleep. My mom did not know what to do. My dad was confused over the whole ordeal because he never believed in the paranormal when he was a kid or a teenager because okay. he always thought there were so many made-up stories about heard about them, whether it be a kid, a teenager, or at his current age. Yeah. He always thought, like, it's not real. It can't be. He obviously believes it now because it happened, but... Yeah, it's hard to ignore it when it's happening to you, right? Yeah, that's right. So, I remember one very specific moment, a couple actually, where I was just going to my mom's room and this shadow person would just follow me. And I remember going to the door, opening it as usual, just to tell my mom like there's something in the room with me. And the shadow person was on the third stair from the top of my upstairs in my house. Ooh. And he was there, watching me as usual. And I remember it felt 
like I was just standing there for hours, but from what I remember, it was only a few minutes, and I did not know what to do. I was panicking. My little three-year-old brain was like, oh my god, what is this thing? What is this thing? I unfreeze myself, run into my mom's room, run panicking and crying because three, I'm three years old, as I continuously say. Yeah. And she goes and checks the stairs. What there appears to be is, like, actually a little bit of dirt. Hmm. Um, something that was not there before because my parents are both clean freaks and they make sure every single thing in our house is spick and span. Okay. As the term goes. And so this time she let me sleep in her bed. Um, my, my sister, uh, she's 17 now. She was going downstairs with my mom for breakfast and she just sees this tall, lanky, black shadow man with that same indigenous feather on top of his head. Mm -hmm. She, again, points it out to my mom. And she's, of course, scared. But, um, my mom doesn't see anything, but she knows there's something going on. But my sister was clinging to my mom's side for the rest of the day. I mean, I would too, yeah. Honestly... As weird as this sounds, my sister does not remember any of this. It was either something to do with the experience, or it was just her being five years old at the time. It could be trauma. You know, when you're young, if you suffer a traumatic experience, your brain's like, it blocks it out so you don't, you know, constantly relive it. So maybe it was so traumatic yeah. for her that she just was like, yeah, nope, delete. Yeah. But you're both were so young, I guarantee there's no way your mom thought you were making it up because that's so descriptive and you're, I guarantee that she was like, huh, that's no good. No bueno. Yeah. And the second time I remember waking up, I had this very vivid dream around the time this was happening. Like, I remember waking up at one point in the night and imagining a large hole in the middle of my bed. And I remember waking up after that dream from the large hole in my bed mm -hmm. and actually feeling it. Like, I remember my foot actually being able to go through the hole and actually touching where my toys were underneath my bed. Like, my foot could feel all the plastic action figures underneath. Oh my gosh. Bed. That's scary. Yeah. It was, it was, oh my, it was so terrifying at that time. The next dream I had was like a year later. We're still both experiencing the shadow man every once in a while. And the next dream I had, I had this teddy bear that I uh, always slept with. Mm -hmm. It was a Winnie the Pooh, but of course when I was little I couldn't pronounce the W, so I called him Nitty. <laughs> and I, I always slept with him, and I remember waking up going to where my toys were because I was just wanting to play whether regardless if there's no light or not search for a toy I wanted to play with but I just felt like I just pulled out six of the same teddy bear on end hmm. it was weird and confusing and then I'd turn around and that same shadow person was just right there behind me I was so scared, I rushed to turn on the light, and all the bears but one are gone, my original one, of course, and the shadow man is gone, too. I'm shaking because of how scary this experience was, Yeah. and my mom starts to do some research, like, you know how paranormal activity has been a way for doing research into... Yeah, I mean, eventually enough's enough. you got to figure out what the hell's going on in your home, you know? Exactly. And, and so my mom does some research, and she tries to figure out how to get rid of a spirit in your house as a, in, like, you know, in a normal, safe environment. Yeah, yeah. To pretty much to cleanse it. Yeah, to cleanse. 
she finds this person who would do stuff like that. And she would, my mom said she laid out little crystals, purple crystals around the house. And she was um, going around with like a stick that was actually on fire. Oh, that probably was sage then. It sounds like your mom contacted a white witch. Essentially, like, what they do is they, they specialize in, like, safety magic and healing magic. Um, it's an alternative solution if you don't want to, like, bring the church into your home and stuff. Yeah. And she she's waving the stick around, and apparently she was doing some sort of song. Song was, like, part of the ritual to help get the shadow man away. Mm-hmm. The whole ritual took, like, apparently, according to... My parents, half hour, then me and my sister only each, each experienced the shadow person one more time before never seeing it again. Oh, huh, okay. The last, time, the last time my sister saw it was he had a, had, she was also having vivid dreams at the same time this was going on, as well as me. Mm-hmm. only had one major one that really stood out to her, and this one was, she was dreaming that there's a train trap flying above, floating above her head as she, she was sleeping, and there's an actual train going over the train track, and she wakes up, and the shadow person is just standing on the corner of her room, watching her, and according to my sister, she said it disappeared as soon as she saw it, hmm. and then... The last time I saw the Shadow Man before finally um, never seeing it again was when I was in my room, I was playing with these little dinky cars, mm-hmm. and it was around 8.30 at night, and it was already d- dark outside because it was around winter time, and I was playing with my little... Cars. I remember having a blue and a red one. I remember I couldn't find the blue one. I just put it down somewhere and I couldn't find it. And then I eventually found it in a place where I would have had no ability to reach up and put it there. It was on top of a bookshelf that had like five or six different shelves on it. And it was standing right at the very top. Hmm. And I asked my mom to go get it. And she she was confused on how it got up there, but she got it and let me play for 15 more minutes, and then she put me to bed, and we were reading me a story, and I go to sleep like normal, and then I wake up and that shadow person is there, and I remember seeing him and disappearing, like, and seeing the shadow person disappear, just like my sister, who's that final experience. Okay. Maybe he was saying goodbye. Yeah, maybe. Did you ever find out if your house was built on, like, indigenous land or possibly some kind of burial ground of such? Yeah, my mom actually did talk to the genie lady outside Mm -hmm. along with my dad. And she actually did say, like, a thousand years prior to my house being built, there was actually an indigenous same ground where my house was built. Okay. And they... They had they normally did their indigenous ceremonies and people died on the land as normal. They had their indigenous funerals to goodbye their loved ones. Yeah, it's always dangerous when you build on they sacred land. Goodbye to their chieftain. Yeah, apparently it was their chieftain that was haunting my house because he was angry at us for building a house and then living on it. Yeah. He did not like he was especially. He especially didn't like me for some reason. Oh. Like, he, it felt like there was always some attachment going on, as weird as it sounds. But Maybe he was trying to drag you down in that hole in your bed to him, bring you down to his Maybe. level. Maybe. Like, maybe just kind of drag me to hell or something. I hope not. I'm glad that you didn't get yeah, dragged to hell. Not. So ever since yeah. uh, you had that lady come in and do the ritual, and after seeing him, it's been quiet? It's been quiet, and then after seeing him for the final time, I remember waking up in the morning, I was just so happy. My mom 
even commented on the fact, like, wow, Liam, you're so happy today. I've had no experiences after that. It's just been end, full of endless joy here after that. I'm glad to hear. Here's hoping it stays that way. All right, so I really appreciate you sharing your tale with me, Liam. Uh, we really enjoy that. At least I know I did. I hope everyone else did as well. If you guys haven't uh, already subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so now. And if you have a paranormal tale you'd like to share, hop on over to my Discord channel called My Paranormal Experience. You'll know you found it when you click the link down below.